I don't know. Welcome once again, mutants and humans, and even the evolved uh, technarchy, if, you, if you're so far in your evolutionary, uh, uh, pa- uh, evolutionary like uh, future, or your path is so high, you're so woke that you've already the ascended. ascended. <laughs> yeah, you've already ascended. Um, <laughs> welcome, you, you folk as well. I'm sure there's no point in you listening to us emotional apes, but enjoy. Um, we are here today talking about New Mutants issue number two. Uh, I love the New Mutants run so far. What is your feelings on New Mutants so far, Danny? I, I like New Mutants, but not for New Mutants. I like it for like <laughs> the Starjammer. Like, yeah. I like Everything it for the happening Guard. around. Yes, the the greater universe, the greater like Marvel, uh, I guess you could say space happenings and all that. Exactly. Shit. Like that's why I like New Mutants is a lot of that stuff. The New Mutants characters themselves are kind of uh, individually people like uh, Douglas has its uh, amus- amusing sides and like magic is awesome. Yeah. But you know, for the rest of them, I'm kind of just like ah, eh, whatever. And I, I, I never really got behind the New Mutants comic originally. I liked the Legion stuff, but like the characters and a lot of those like plots were kind of campy from the 80s and they just didn't really pull me as much as like the core x-men team but i got what they were going for they were trying to be the new generation mutants and that was in the 80s and it i came to a strange realization when reading this i mean shouldn't like a lot of these like new mutants characters be almost like 50 like yeah they were a team formed in 1982 i believe and most of them were teenagers like i think the oldest one was like 17 and that was in 1980 so like I guess with the you know exception of people like Magic who lived in limbo and Douglas who died and got resurrected and I don't even know what to say about Mondo. <laughs> like I'll, oh don't even God. reference him. And I know I know that uh, Wolfsbane Renee died as well, but still like some of these people never died, and I don't get why they're. I I know it's that comic book like kind of trope with aging, but still I don't get why they're using them as this. Use, this youthful team in in the current x-men run i feel like this was a good opportunity for them to flush out a brand new young group of start new. Mutants. yeah like yeah. an actual new new mutants like should be what we're what the cast should be i really thought they were gonna do that at least with one of these books in down of x i thought one of them was gonna be a book right? full of new mutants it feels like yeah. a missed opportunity, and you kind of felt like this was this was the time like this was the moment dawn of x for crying out loud as you're freaking title like what what is the point of like you know really like hamming up these older new mutant characters that don't seem to make sense because some of them Mm -hmm. like we we get exposed to like a classic new mutant character cannibal like sam yes he 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 seems aged like he has a kid now even though there's there's still kind of a weird age discrepancy it's it feels more organic the rest of them it does not like it just doesn't fit Especially people like Danny, like she's seen a lot of stuff and she's like yeah. Valkyrie and all these crazy things. So some of them, like their demeanors and their their approach to being very juvenile almost feels like uh, forced because they want the, them to feel useful. They're trying to appeal for that useful uh, image. You think it's a step back for their characters? Yes, it is. It's a bit of a de-evolution for their characters in the way that they were trying to age their personas and their experience. Like, you want the New Mutants to transition into what would be... You know how cool it would be if the X-Men was just the New Mutants? Like, the New Mutants eventually became, like, the core yeah. x the natural progression and evolution that you expect them like you know how like people like gene and and scott go on to become people like charles like the leaders they they evolve to their spots like it's a uh they they do that in comics with a lot of characters and they they age organically the new mutants kind of have stepped away with that from that in this current iteration in this current volume they're just like no we're we're de-aged we're kind of juvenile we've got a juvenile palette put on us and that's what we're meant to, you know, be shown as. But they still have the eschlings of their their history that kind of ham that up. And occasionally you're just like, oh, yeah, you know, like Robert DaCosta is a businessman. And he has been like, you know, of mm-hmm. age and in, in control of like a lot of mature aspects of his life for a while, as with Sam. And like, I don't know what to feel about magic. 
Magic, when she was originally written, uh, returning from Limbo and becoming more prominent in the X-Men during, like, the Messiah trilogy, yeah. she, was, she was very mature and gritty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I liked it. I liked it. Now they kind of write her in a way that reminds me of, like, kind of like a, not heavy, but like a nod to, like, Harlequin. She's, like a, she's a Sundere. She's a Sundere. A, yes, yes. Yeah, so if yes. you watch anime, a Sundere is a girl who uh, is very cold and pushes you away, and, and, but she eventually kind of warms up to you over time. But yeah. she always has that demeanor of cold and pushing you away, which is, uh, I don't know, it's interesting. And now it makes more sense when I call her a Sundere with all the uh, kind of artistic anime choices they made in the last issue it synergizes um, you're right that is seems yeah. like the kind of vibe they're going for so maybe that's what what's what's going on with her but um right she's seen some shit she should be like very almost like stoic and like i don't have have time to deal with all this nonsense almost yeah like she think? normally has like a greater like um objective i remember when she hustled the U- new mutants into getting back together and getting legion so so they could go and kill the old gods because she had a vendetta against them like literally used legion to kill like cthulhu mm-hmm. essentially yeah <laughs> and that was dope and i like that this whole like digressing her into like that type of character arc or like arc or, like archetype it's, it's just it's it's another de-evolution and that's my biggest problem with New Mutants. But overall, like, I still like the setting. I like the comedy. Mm-hmm. I like the the nods on some of their characters. But there are a few things here that, like, just don't fit with the con- the canon and the chronology and how the characters were supposed to grow organically. But I'm loving it. I'm still loving it. I'm still very, like, yeah. my qualms with it are so small compared to, like, the awesome, like, things that they give us and, and the way that the pacing goes and the writing. And I mean, overall, like you're really getting something that's that's still Hickman, so I'm happy. It's <laughs> Hickman at the helm on this one. Yeah, but he's doing the writing on this one. He's not leasing it to anybody. He's like, no. I want to write New Mutants, and that's why I can understand some of the the canon like overlooking because Hickman does do that in his own unique way. He will he will fucks with the canon some, but he usually keeps it clean in the end. So I give it more of a pass, and I'm I'm still thumbs up all the way on New Mutants. Awesome. Um... Penciled by Rod Reese. Rod uh, Rice? Reese? Reyes? 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 Oh, Reyes. Yeah, that makes yeah. more sense. Um, yeah, so are you ready to get into this issue? Yeah, let's dive into it. It has like a real quick like recap that kind of really plays off of the pacing. Like I said earlier, it's a fast pacing. It's like it is. It is fast pacing. It's like let's this uses these quick beats to be like, hey, let's get you back up to speed, and we're going. <laughs> and here we go. Um, so yeah, let's do this. Space jail. How are things going for the new mutants? Well, not great. Not great at all. So we start with. Uh, we start with sunspot saying where to start that's okay <laughs> <laughs> we literally like it's like him doing that quick recap that i was yeah like, so he- yeah he goes into the recap and he's just talking about uh guys you know i'm i'm a businessman i'm persuasive i could get stuff done and he goes into like what happened we had to ride with some space pirates um talking shit saying that they can't really do some good space pirating um, still using Mondo as pretty much a human storage locker. Yeah, it was weird how he broke down like the preceding events. He was just like, yes. I got the old crew back together. Before I left, I set things right with my lawyers because, you know, sometimes I go away for a long time and a business can fall apart if you're gone too long without provisions set up. So I hustled some space pirates and that got us to where essentially we are now. But before that, we jacked this egg. <laughs> <laughs> we got the egg. Which is funny because they did the old switcheroo, which yeah, I didn't know. I didn't catch that. Like, I didn't catch I, that. I, I, I got like kind of like an idea that something was up with what they did. But this was like their way of kind of revealing like, oh, by the way, we still have like the king egg, which is like that brood queen or brood king kind of waiting, ticking time bomb catastrophe like plot device that is now sitting inside Mondo of all fucking people. Oh, Jesus. I wonder if he's going to fuse with it because he can fuse with like objects so or he can like absorb them into himself. Right. What if he becomes the, the king? Egg? He becomes king. egg. 
He was <laughs> King Egg. <laughs> like Egg shows up, golden balls. It's just like, no, man. I'm the only egg. I'm the only egg guy. I do the eggs around here. <laughs> and then they fight, and you have Mondo fighting gold balls. And I just go like, you know, I'm done here. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I can't do any more of that. <laughs> you lost me at when Mondo fight gold balls. Like, Hickman, I'm done with you. I'm out. <laughs> and I then agree. he lost me. I go the opposite, Hickman. I want to see a one shot now, <laughs> right now. Do it, make it happen. <laughs> the fighting event of the year: Mondo versus Gold Ball. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Uh... Um, but yeah, they they totally put one past on the on the fucking Star Jammers, which was great. And now they're in jail, and they're and they're noting that like it's 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 pretty much just your generic type of jail, but in space. Yeah. Pretty much. They note that uh, Magic starts shit. She gets put in solitary, but she she gets out because she's magic. And she can teleport, which and she can teleport even more because, like, why are we here? Why, why are they in jail? <laughs> <laughs> happens, right? right? She got in a, they kind of gloss over that real quick. They're like, yeah, that's oh, the I Moving on, I bought uh, that space lawyer money to buy. And I'm like, wait, what? Whoa, go why back. do you need the space lawyer? Just teleport the fuck out. Like, how did you miss this? Like, yeah, I, I don't know if, if that was like, a, I almost felt like that was a tongue in cheek thing. For, like, Hickman, where he was trying to, like... You know how um, Dawn of X, like, the actual X-Men issues have, like, that campy, like, 80s sitcom feel? Since, like, issue one, where it's, like, the family vibe and all that. Like, it's, like, an 80s sitcom family. Like, this has that kind of campy vibe, too, where it's, like, a sitcom, but, like, uh, more of, like, a young, youthful kind of sitcom. But I think that's what the joke is supposed to be, where he acknowledges, oh, yeah, she could teleport, but they're still in jail. Like, it's, like, there's a bit of a fourth wall thing kind of going on. Yeah, plus they had to get to Sam somehow. Yeah, that's why I look at that as, like, that's a comedic, like, plot device and not just lazy writing. Because at first I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) 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 This derails the whole story, but I'm like, oh, this is kind of like a Deadpool thing where it's, like, a joke on the fourth wall. At least I might be giving him benefit of the doubt, maybe. Head of X, Hickman's getting busy, and he's got a lot going on. (laughs) Sure. You know, it's it it could be just something he missed, and I'm giving him far more credit than he deserves. But you know, he's worked <laughs> he's worked this kind of style of writing before, and I've seen it like kind of play out. So, but yeah, like we get Bobby here, and he's like, I'm gonna buy this like you know real expensive space lawyer. We'll be out of here in no time. This can't fail. <laughs> right. Building up more on the comedic plot device that is uh, moving forward with them being you know in custody, <laughs> being reprimanded, and he wants jumpsuits like in space. <laughs> Even the cliche orange jumpsuits in a like a whole new universe that has existed, a galactic empire that's existed before the dawn of man, like is right? even gonna happen. And they still have our orange jumpsuits as <laughs> theirs. <laughs> it does kind of feel like like uh, Rick and Morty or something, where it's just all like, or like DBZA, where they're just all like Space Australia. There's a Space Australia. And Spaces, you gotta eat there. You gotta eat Spaces. It's Spaces. It's good food. <laughs> In space. That's where Jace is from. Space Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. How is that a thing? But yes. Um, they hire the lawyer, right? And they go to court. And then, well, uh, he, Rob, Robert uh, kind of ends up with he's just kind of, you can see kind of like his arrogance too this whole time. He's very cocky. He's just like, I'm Robert DaCosta. I'm the well, he's a rich businessman. He's like throwing money at yeah. all of his problems, and it's like been a like completely like a, a foolproof plan from the get go. Like, oh, can we take a moment though to note? Look at that. Do you see those like uh, jurors in the back? Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's like one of them that looks like right out of Star Wars, like one of those Camino cloners with the long head. It does. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? I saw that right away and I was like, oh man, Disney, you're you're just resting on your properties now. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're like, what are we putting there? I don't know. Draw something quick. They're trying to, they're trying to tie it. You know, aliens. <laughs> they feel the only way now that they can save the Star Wars franchise is if they tie it into their Marvel universe. So that's what they're going to do. Oh, no. Nah. Star Wars is going to be fine. They got Baby Yoda. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> that big's a marketing goldmine. You're right. Yeah. They're going to be just fine financially. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But this lawyer had a terrible time of trying to negotiate, like, why they should be let off. They're like, they're right. foreigners. They don't know any better. They're not from our space. Like, and, and the judge is like, you know, they broke laws <laughs> yeah. in our territory. Yeah, it's just like, where are we? Share space? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's not like we went to their hometown and, like, arrested them for, like, committing crimes against the Empire. Like, they literally are in the Empire committing crimes. <laughs> You you got nothing. You got no legs to stand on, buddy. And then the fucking lawyer's just like, "Well, you got me there." <laughs> just fucking, he tosses the whole fucking argument in. It just says like, "Guess we're fucked." And it's just yeah. like the judge is like, "Guilty as fuck." Boom, done. And that's it. That's the whole trial. Like it wasn't the issue. They didn't draw it out. It didn't go on in overtime. You know, with like plot twist or anything. It literally was like one page of just like, yeah, you're they're, they're guilty. They're yeah. guilty. Yeah, they're guilty. Done. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Robert, Robert's really mad. He's just like, uh, somebody's not getting paid. <laughs> and this weird fucking like, I want to say like iguana esque. Lawyer is just like, ah, damn. <laughs> He's like, ah, sorry. <laughs> I did my thing. <laughs> He's like the, uh, what's his name from The Simpsons? Uh, uh, Lionel Hurts. Lionel Hurts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, that, was, uh, that was some good lawyering. Yeah. <laughs> That's <a> good lawyering. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Out. Uh, but then we get that nice reveal at the uh, at the end of like what you thought was gonna be just like a shit show where you're like oh well then what's gonna happen now are they going yeah. to prison and it's just like no none of this really matters because you know Sam's here they've been remanded over like the lawyer pa- or the judge passed down his like sentence where they remanded like indefinitely to yeah. an imperial like Shi'ar custody and the people who look over them are none other than Sam and his his new you know baby mama. Baby Mama, Isabel Kane, um, Smasher. New, well, I guess like the the current Smasher, because there was like a fifth Smasher that was right. like a monster, but I think they just shared the name and not the origin. She's the one that actually is carrying the current Smasher mantle that throws all the way back to the original Smasher from the OG, like Dave Cockrum and fucking, um, gosh, who's that? Chris Claremont, yeah, Dave Cockerman and Chris Claremont yeah. invented the Imperial Guards, so like the OG Smasher, written by yeah. him. She's like the descended, current descendant. Also a human. Also a human, and she's the sub, uh, what is it called? The uh, She's part of the Shared Imperial Guard. Yeah, uh, sub guard. Only human, only human to serve as, as like a current like Imperial Guard member. Which is Maybe yeah. in the past they had other humans, but from what I know, that's a rare thing. And we yeah. talked about the nonsense that's already kind of tied from that because she's like from Ohio, right. and they did this weird, like, straight up, like, kind of uh, Green Lantern origin story where, like, it's like her becoming Smasher is tied to her finding the goggles after the that current Smasher like crash lands and dies. It's it's so so Green Lantern like uh, esque in its like in its design, and then they they have her become an Avenger, which was weird, and then now she's back in the Imperial Guard in Shi'ar space, which makes sense. Because like her being an imperial guard on Earth is makes zero sense, seeing as Shi'ar space is like light years away. <laughs> right. It's like at that point, what are you even guarding? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The idea, she's like, don't talk bad about the imperial guard while I'm around. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> do, do you do you understand the backstory about her and Sam having a kid? Because like that was apparently like a couple years ago that storyline came to fruition nah, i remember them showing up in new avengers right i believe so because after the whole like fallout with the age of x going mm-hmm. into a of a plus x then like all new all different avengers where they started shoehorning in the x-men characters because they were just like we'll force you to like the avengers by putting the x-men in it ha <laughs> ha and that still didn't work, but I mean, you know, Cannonball got to become an Avenger in his own right, which was one of the few characters that it did kind of work for. He felt like when Beast transitioned into the Avengers and it felt more organic, more natural instead of like fisted in. But uh, yeah, I guess like they, they met through that and then went on to have a kid at some point over the, the story arc that happened the last two years. Interesting. Uh, I believe it's in the Infinity Run. Oh. Uh, so I guess uh, during the uh, Builder War, uh, Smasher joined the Avengers, um, and that's where they met Sam, or she met, yeah. Yeah, okay, so Sam, her cannibal hooked up through that. Started dating then. Right. Okay, okay. 
So that's like all recent stuff. And they already have a kid, which feels more, uh, you know, like a, a character growing up, you know, and like having like a a, a, a palette added to his character or to their persona without them like being rewritten or something, you know, give a character a life changing injury, have them have a kid, have them develop a relationship with a certain significant other. There's are ways that they can progress these characters developments through natural storytelling yeah. devices that feel fine. It's like, OK. You feel the the history and the age there where it's like it's weird he has a kid because I don't know the plot behind it, but it feels okay, it doesn't feel weird, you know, like he's I mean, gotten around. Yeah, he's been doing things. Yeah, he was always kind of like, you know, like the lead kind of like pretty boy type for like the with that kind of southern draw. Yeah. So it's like, you know, like the chicks were after that dude. <laughs> he did like half the new mutants. <laughs> He did. Yeah, he, he did. was with Danny at one point. Like, I mean, all of them. Like, he they got around. <laughs> yeah, I remember Danny. Yeah, yeah, they were they were fucking <laughs> all the time. <laughs> They're more hormonal and shit. <laughs> um, I was gonna ask a question. I already forgot what that was. Oh, her glasses. Do you know the name? The name of them are called the Excess Packs. Do you know the meaning behind that name? I'm always curious. Like, it's just such a weird name. Who thought Excess Pox or Excess Pox? No, I'm not familiar with that one at all, actually. I didn't know that that was like the, the actual name for like the glasses that she, her goggles that she wears. Yeah. Um, I was just curious. I've always wondered that, why they were called that. I think it was just some sort of play. On. It's you know when you go back to a lot of these characters, sometimes they're a play on multiple words put together. Sure. And I know that it's it's probably something to do with the fact that the glasses are used to like download radiation and store them and like utilize it for like super strength and just some sort of unique output that it gives to the user. That's probably like translated from what that means. Like there's some sort of tie to how radiation and how people interact with it. Maybe like that. Could oh, be I'm a- totally reading this wrong. There should totally be a hypho- hyphen in it. It should be exospecs, like spectacles. Oh, it's spelled that with an, makes sense. It's that, spelled yeah, with an that, X though, yeah, so it confused okay. the fuck out of me. Okay. Um, weird side tangent on goggles to a random character. That hasn't been seen for a while, but good to see her around for sure. Just hanging out in the corner, letting everyone know they're still prisoners. Bitch, you're still a prisoner. Yeah, they're wards of them now. They're wards of the Imperial State. That's great. Uh, the Shi'ar Empire. I wonder if this means we're, we're, they're staying up here for good, pretty much, or at least for a while. Well, uh, in I space. mean, they're, 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 they're seem like that they were, everything was going to be set and fine as the story progressed progresses but it it does seem like they get kind of tied in some other shenanigans that keeps them in space longer yeah um but yeah they all kind of embrace sam and they're like yo except for mondo and uh chamber because they're all like i don't know they're not legit new mutants they're not and this is uh interesting that they're making that like distinction they're like yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're just like that. And Chamber just, looks like Edward Scissorhands back there, like super kinda, emo. super super emo. Uh, Mondo's just all like, "Man, this thing inside me is giving me weird indigestion. I don't, I don't <laughs> like it." He's like, he's he's still traumatized about that time that he shared his body with Krakoa, and Krakoa put him in like it was like a dark place. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's I still have recovered, just darkness everywhere. And I wanna I wanna kinda note on this page, it's kind of it's this especially this last panel where they're all embracing, it's super rough compared to like and that's kinda like the artistic style throughout this. This is very expressionistic. You're gonna see things outside of lines and splatters and whatnot. But look at like Danny Moonstar's hair. It's it, it's lines. got a scrapbook feel. Yeah. It's it's uh what do you think and like her hand too. Look at the hand or her left hand. It's kind of Yeah, it's it's like a it's, it's like you took a sticker out of like one part of the comic and like glued it onto another part and it just Ooh. forcefully made its way into the image. And yeah, that, that, that hand drawing looks like it was like the preliminary drawing when they're like getting like the general idea of what the hand's going to look like. And then they polish it up afterwards, but they never did. The polish. They never polished. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's still just like, cause it's got that blurry kind of fade to it. That most like pre drawings where they kind of have multiple lines, kind of like, yeah. like a, a blur effect almost. Mm-hmm. Just to kind of give you the rough space that you get to work with. 
And that's what is just totally conflicting the whole image here. Because at the top, the image works, but then you get this bottom part that's almost like the the art style changed halfway through the page. Yeah. Almost literally. Literally, yeah, quite literally. And I have another critique on the just the the character portrayal. Like once again, like these are supposed to be like people grown up, like in their in their forties and shit, and like they're <laughs> they're clearly just a group of like teenagers. Still. I, I and like Magic's persona, like her just being so giddy and playful, it's weird. I I like it when she's more just serious, not like serious to the point of being like brooding, but more of just like I lived in limbo. Like I don't the concept of being serious and like that kind of level of of discourse is just common to me because of the world I grew up in. You know, I yeah. grew up in a, a dimension, a hell dimension, and be chipper. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'd be scared. I'd be scared because I'd be like, your your joy is is suspect. <laughs> You should not be that happy for someone who grew up in, like, a hell dimension. Like, what are you thinking about right now? Like, are you thinking about murder? Is that where your joy comes from? <laughs> so it's it's weird to see them, like, portrayed in this way. But that's just another nitpick in what still is a pretty good, se- a pretty good series. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but Sam, look at Sam. He's grown. Yeah. Yeah. He's about the only one here. Right. Um, so they, they're just talking like good to see each other, bantering a little bit, wondering why they kind of got in this situation. Rain's like star jammers, the worst. Um <laughs> Yeah. It sounds like they are, aren't they? Like, <laughs> yeah, but so happy to see him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny, like, how they get brought up to speed, and like, they're like, oh, okay, well, how did you know we were here? And he, like, fucked with them by saying he put those tracking devices behind their ears. Yeah. That was a good little fake out I liked. <laughs> that was a good little burn. I like that because that actually illustrates uh, the, like, camaraderie and, like, the relationship they have Shit. as mutants. I at least appreciate that Hickman's flushing that out. Like, they, they do have history in that way and that they do have an understanding with each other where they can fuck with each other and know how to fuck with each other. Yes. That's something only real friends and people who grow up get that. Exactly. Kind of yeah. Like, that's a real thing. Like, that's that's kudos to him for actually pulling that out. Because, like, a lot of these other things kind of make you confused about them. And you're like, you're like, who are these people? They don't seem the right age. Some of their motivations are different. But it's like at least their camaraderie and, like, character interactions fit. And they feel appropriate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, dialogue's great between them. The banter's good. It it's definitely feels real, like they've been friends for a while. Absolutely. Um, but uh, Sam mentions, yeah, we just got to message from your lawyer and he, uh, even uh karma's just all like she was gullible she's like wait there's i think i feel it it's in my ear now yeah she was freaking out about it <laughs> yeah. he's like he's like except for you zan we put it behind your left ear and she's like oh my god <laughs> and he's like dude that's not we, we we do the lawyer it's it's just chill out i like how they razz him about the lawyer too because they say that the lawyer was literally like the worst one money could buy and bobby was constantly under the understanding that he got the best lawyer money could buy that's ridiculous <laughs> oh man but yeah like um they they pretty much all get caught up to speed on like uh-huh. everything and they're they're all pretty good to go but bobby's still kind of miffed because he's like brooding that him and sam have have drifted and he feels like that that you know that there there's a little bit of beef between him but that all gets justified real quick when his wife just decks him in the face yeah that's great <laughs> this is like can someone knock some sense into this boy and they just wham and it's like okay okay it's <laughs> great because it, it takes him down a little bit but uh he's uh Knocks him on his high horse literally he's literally yeah he's been very pompous this whole time and she comes in and she's just like allow me dear and we just get a nice whack and it's a great panel because we go from like regular colors to the action happening and it goes bright red and then we cut to uh we cut to him on the floor, and it's no just inks uh, with a little bit of gray tones. It's pretty much black and white, except for the blood running down his nose. What did you think of like the That's artistic beautiful. choices? Yeah, I That's thought it was beautiful. great. Like, that was yeah, 
a nominal way to focus like where the action's going based off of just the still yeah. images, like two dimensional still images, not moving around. Your eyes are bouncing like from left to right, to down to up, and you're mm-hmm. falling and all around. You can feel it play out in real time, just like wham. And there's the blood. And what a cool way to accent the blood with just that monotone, like black and white with one color. Yes. I like that. I like that. See, there's parts of this artwork that really work. And then there are yeah. parts that you're just like, whoa. Oh, yeah. You got Some kind of collage crazy. here. What's going on? Got a little crazy. It's like someone... at one point, like you were writing it, and then like someone's kid came in and started fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a bit of a harsh burn, but it feels that way. It does feel like that, honestly. It's a compliment and an insult. The compliment, enjoy it. <laughs> oh, jeez. And uh, essentially, uh, Isabel Kane is uh, more mad about the fact that she had to get a babysitter that wasn't their regular babysitter. <laughs> they make it so the brooding like new mother like trope right. he's just like is he's all pissed about like i got a kid at home and i gotta deal with this shit the lawyer called the book the baby you understand what i'm just, <laughs> just like, that's so funny all the time i'll dress as like an imperial guard superhero like yeah it's, <laughs> the comedy in this works so much just because of the scenarios as well that's that's what's a lot of the humor really pulls from is just like Look at this scenario. Step back and really look at it, and it's it's just funny in its own right. Yeah, it is great, and she even like takes note that like scrolls, scrolls, shock troopers are laying siege to share outposts, and just she's just naming like all these like things that are happening, and then she's just like, "But the fucking babysitter." Yeah, and I, she was kind of <laughs> remiss about those things too, because she was yeah. like. People have, the other pool guards are there having a great time without me. <laughs> Just talking about like this, like military military excursions in locations where people are at war, and she's yeah. like, "I could have been there, but worst of all, you had to fucking upset the kid." <laughs> the kid takes that out on me. Yeah, you had to hear her cry. <laughs> oh man! And then we get uh, we get Sam. And we get a, uh, we get Sam and uh, Sunspot, and they they finally come to terms, and they they make up, and they're like, "Yo, good to see you, good times. What's up? My nose is broke, I think, but what's up?" Yeah, I like it real <laughs> quick. It was just like the the trial. It was just like real quick. All the moments just fast paced, like trial over, reunite with Sam, punch to the face, everything's good. We're best friends again. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on. <laughs> yeah. A little yeah. bit more of that weird art choice though. I still like it in this point though, where you see it works. Like where it's he's got that kind of like dot gradient and is purple. But it, it it's it's good to illustrate the contrasting mm-hmm. point of views and like them the emotional spectrums that they're both rocking in that one panel. Yeah. That I like. like those are unique like choices and I'm liking that. I, 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 I hope that more of that stuff gets fleshed out in New Mutants going forward because that I'm enjoying. Not so much the weird Claw shit, but this this choice I do appreciate. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely he's taking risks, and uh, most of the time they're working. Just sometimes, just uh oh man, that hair, that hair. <laughs> I was like, I could do that. You want to see me do it? I'll do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a cakewalk. <laughs> exactly. Um. So, and then they kind of had back where they they don't really say where they're heading at the moment do they they're just like we're good we're out of here they're gonna go talk to essentially um smasher uh loots that they're going to go talk to um someone above her in the imperial guard to try to get a um kind of reprimand them here to try to allow their their crimes to be redacted and they can kind of wash the plate with all this of all this nonsense that's essentially they're just heading back to their ship I believe is what's going on, or at least their quarters of communication. Right. Okay. Uh, but then we cut to the Sheriff Imperial Court Star Sector Four Criminal Processing Station, and it just seems like a copy of their uh, kind of like their court case and like all their legal documents from it. But at the end, we get uh, pretty much a little bit of snippet of uh, narration or. 
a little bit of, uh, yeah, narration. According to a prearranged agreement with the Imperial High Council, the above defendants have been reprimanded, uh, remanded into the custody of an Imperial Guard to serve out the duration of their sentence, which is life sentence, by the way. Yeah. The court strongly recommends that their entire sentence is served as, while in custody, the defendants constantly displayed aggressive behavior and a severe disrespect of authority, and one of them tried to coerce and outright bribe every single officer he encountered. I wonder who that was. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. God damn. Of course he would. Of course he would. Yeah. Um, the court further orders that the defendant's space lawyer be sanctioned for incompetence. He was literally the worst space lawyer money could buy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, he fucked that up. Oh, but he fucked like, that hard. But it's like Robert's second mutation is just like, I'm going to throw money at all my problems just reactively. Like, reflexively, he will just throw money. Like, Spider-Man has his spider sense, and Robert has his money sense. Or he's like, just money. <laughs> yeah. I like this, though, because this is more of like what they were saying with like uh, a lot of the stuff that the star jammers were going into and how they label them and stuff like it's this is building like a very, a very distinct ammo uh, as the new mutant of for the new mutants for being troublemakers in this like part of the galaxy. Like Mm -hmm. they're going to become infamous in the way that the star jammers are at this point. Yeah, they are. They're building like a reputation in space. Yeah, probably a negative one. (laughs) Exactly. They're serious in their Imperium. They're just like, hey, like yeah. you know, we have laws and shit. And they're just like, we don't care. We're the new mutants. We're new, right? We get that new okay. mutant smell. <laughs> You've been new for 40 years. Yeah, get over it. <laughs> <laughs> You're like that goddamn, like, you know, fucking furniture store down the street that's like constantly going through like a, a grand opening or going out of business sale. <laughs> like, Pick one. <laughs> it's like a guy who is. The new iPad still, the third generation iPad that they called new iPad. And you're just all like, well, five years later, you're still calling that the new iPad? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh, um, so we cut to Shi'ar space, and they're going through a portal, it looks like. Like a warp, warp, a warp or a warp hyperdrive portal. portal. Kind of like the ones that they would have in, like, uh, Cowboy Bebop. Yes. Yeah. I forgot about those. Yeah, yeah, that actually does. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Um, yeah. It almost looks like a a well, almost like a two dimensional pylon that you see in like Warhammer forty k or something. Oh, you know what? It, it does kind of have that and like a Stargate vibe. And a Stargate vibe for sure. Yeah, the, the, yeah I mean, they even does forty k as well. Yeah, I mean, definitely. they even say the word Stargate, approaching the Stargate. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Way to go, Marvel. <laughs> Someone's gonna get sued, but yeah, they're, they're arrested on a few tropes here. <laughs> but they received a magister's uh encryption code and they play it. And who is the message from Danny? Oh, dude, it, it is the probably hands down the dopest character in the entire Imperial Guard, if not the entire Shi'ar Empire. Absolutely, Cal Ark, also known as the fucking Gladiator. Gladiator. It's good to. It's always good to see Gladiator. Oh yes, Gladiator is pimp. Pimp as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Love um, he brings the. He brings the trouble and anything he shows up in. He's just like, all right, I'm here to throw down. I'm Gladiator. I'm either gonna destroy this planet or I'm gonna destroy whoever's threatening like the Imperial Guard or whatever. Cause he's got that level of strength. Like he's like he's galactic in his strength and power. Right, and. Uh... What does he say? He's essentially saying uh, this encoding transmission, you're, the orders are to execute them immediately and with vigor. Um, who is he referring to? Are they referring to the... Because uh, he mentions the uh, shares and uh, Kithiri's eyes uh, for you find yourself in exactly... Yeah, he's, refer- know he's-, he's referencing the gods here. Like okay, he's saying- the gods. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. so she, she gotcha. gets everything worked out with the... the, the uh, essentially with the hierarchy, like, since he's the magistrate of the Imperial... Right. Uh, uh, the Shi'ar Empire right now, since, like, all the stuff going back to, like, War of Kings that fell from, like... I mean, honestly, if you want to go back and start to really understand what's going on here, you'd probably want to start with like Ed Brubaker's run of uh, Deadly Genesis, because then that sets up the third Summer's Child, Vulcan. Yes. And then he goes into space. You'll want to read like the Rise and Fall of the Shi'ar Empire, also mm-hmm. Ed Brubaker, and then leads to War of Kings and all that jazz. 
And that's how you get to having like Gladiator, who used to just be the leader of the Imperial Guard, stepping up and becoming the leader of just the Shi'ar Empire. And and that's still the current, like, well, by the end of this comic, some things change, but at this current point, that's the status quo for Gladiator. And so she, she pretty much gets him to smooth it all out because, I mean, she's an Imperial Guard member. He's both leader of the Shi'ar and a former Imperial Guard leader, so she's got pretty good ties to him. He obviously knows the X-Men and all their jazz, so... That's mm-hmm. probably the easiest way for her to smooth it all over is just be like, well, Gladiator says it's okay, you guys are fine. But at the same time, he re- he's making his whole reference about, like, you know, thank the gods like that you're here because I have another mission that I need you to execute with extreme, you know, vigor and immediately as possible. And that's where the whole story kind of takes a twist and turn. It's like, you know, you think they're they're going to be, you know, pardoned and they're going to go back, but instead the new yeah. mutants are now on another mission that kind of falls under the purview of her. Being an Imperial Guard member, she has no choice, you know. Exactly. Like, this is yeah. this is her duty. Her this is her service. Like, so because they're still tied to, they're still on the ship with these people. The new mutants are along for the ride. Yep. And she even has a great, cool '80s like uh, one-liner here. She's just like, "Tell the babysitter we're going to be running late." <laughs> <laughs> Put, puts yeah. on exospecs very oh, slowly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it was it was such a throwaway eighties line. But I mean, that's that's the origin of the new mutants, and I guess that's Hickman appreciating that as much as possible without being too tongue in cheek. I can't hate it, because I mean that's that's eighties cheese right there. So I mean if if you're doing a pastiche, that's that's pretty spot on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it worked. Made me laugh. Uh, yeah. We and then we cut to uh, the Shi'ar Imperial Advisors. We just kind of learn the structure of the Magister, the Mentor, and the Oracle. We know that Gladiator Kalark is the Magister at the moment. And we have the mentor, which is the leader of the Imperial Guard, super intellect, asymmetrical problem solving ability, master tactician, and the which isn't named, right? And then we got Oracle, who is Sybil. Um Mentor and Oracle well, the oh, mentor and Oracle are very classic, like Imperial Guard characters as yes. well. And the Imperial Guard itself was kind of like a, um, also a pastiche in it itself uh, to the Legion of Superheroes. Legion, I was going to say, uh, yeah. Yeah, by Otto Binder from way uh, back in the day. That's like, so, yeah, that's a like throwback. 1957 or something, yeah, like way back in the day. So, like, Calark is literally like Superman or Superboy because, like, Calark is just Kal-El and Clark combined into one name and his yeah. powers and the way he works. And a uh, mentor straight up Brainiac. Like, even the way he looks, yes. Brainiac has the little device on his head and everything. So, like, he would probably be more an allegory to, like, Brainiac 5, who was a part, or Brainiac 9 or whatever, who was on the Legion of Superheroes. Legion of Superheroes, okay, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that, people, a lot of people say, like, you know, oh, well, the Imperial Guard is just an analogy or, like, an allegory to, like, uh, the Justice League. And I'm like, no, no. That's no, no, that's Squadron Supreme. Squadron Supreme is straight up the Justice League in the Marvel Universe. Like, yeah. Hyperion is straight Superman and all that. No, the, it, the Imperial Guard is more meant to be the Legion of Superheroes. Even if you, like, Google Legion of Superheroes versus Imperial Guard, and they'll show pictures and, like, their costume design and their character design and powers and abilities, they fucking mirror each other heavily. It's, it's funny. Like, you could just see, like, where they got their inspiration from. Which is fair because, you know, Cockrum and, and um, uh, Claremont, I mean, they're old school comic book fans, too. I mean, they grew up with reading the Legion of Superheroes. Right. So this was just them doing like their chance to like make their love letter to that, which I, I can respect. I mean, I don't hate it I, because it's such a, you know, arrest. I like that, that they brought it in, into its own realm. It's like, what if the Legion of Superheroes met the X-Men? Like, this is this is the what if that we'll never get. Right. In reality, like we actually get it. It's just they're they have different names. That's it. Yeah, mentor looks like Brainiac for sure. Yeah. Midget Oracle, I guess you could, uh go ahead. Oracle, I guess you could say it'd be like uh Stargirl or whatever her name is. I can't remember. Like, you know, Starboy and Stargirl, they both have like psychic uh, powers and yeah. 
telekinesis, telepathy, those kind of things. Though Oracle's more telepathy and like precog, all that kind of stuff. Very powerful, though. I remember when I first got introduced to her, it was during um, X Men uh, animated series. Right. Mentor, he never, I don't think he ever showed up in that. He did, so. did he? No. Mm, I don't recall no. him. Yeah. I remember of Gladiator was there. Yeah. And uh, Gladiator chose Mentor and Oracle as his personal advisors, not just to consolidate power between the military and intelligence arms of the Shia Empire. He also chose them because they represent the dueling ideological factions that constantly pull at the empire expansion and consolidation nah man we gotta grow we gotta grow nah man we gotta be mad we just gotta we gotta isolate ourselves mind our own business we need to look within (laughs) like no we need to look with that (laughs) i like that he created his own little yin and yang well i mean say what you will about gladiator in general as being like a badass just like superhero like type character like uh, that paragon archetype he's also a great leader like everybody even even like the stuff they discuss coming in these these next few pages like they acknowledge that like well gladiator works as the leader for the shiar empire because he's just an all-around like perfect like person in his mind and in his power I mean, he literally can't lose because his strength is competence based. So yes. if you can't shake his competence, you can't shake him. Like, he won't be able to be defeated. He'll just keep punching you until you're, you're nothing. Like Superboy, he'll just probably eventually punch through reality. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that happened in the Legion of Superheroes like story arc and all that shit. Superboy went crazy and like punched through reality. How that works, I'll never understand, but you know. <laughs> DC gets crazy. DC does get crazy. I Sometimes watched even Marvel looks tame compared to that. <laughs> uh, don't get me started on Crisis. Let's move on quickly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where do we? Okay, so we after that we cut to uh, them. I imagine they're on the ship and they're just hanging out, rain sleeping. Some of them are chilling. The rest are playing. What looks like poker with weird uh, share space poker. Yeah. Look at those cards. Those are cool. Um, so they're playing, they're they're talking shit to one another. And they pretty much recognize that they don't even know what they're doing, right? <laughs> yeah. He's just like, read him and weep. And he's just like, what the fuck is that? Does it even mean anything? What does this yeah. do? And they're no, all like, I don't know, what are we playing? <laughs> like these symbols and stuff like that. And it seems like everyone's pretty much folded except um, Chamber and, and Danny Moonstar. So they're they're going down uh, toe and toe. They're both all in. And Danny says, <laughs> Chamber's like, I win. And Danny's like, No, I win because I I've played this before and I know that this is a winning hand. Yeah. What does she call it? Like the full empire? She's like, This hand is called the full empire, and <laughs> I know it's a winning hand. I've seen it before. <laughs> and I look at Douglas. The only person who can actually understand these symbols is like, you know, that's not what any of that means. She just elbows him hard. Yeah, and just like, shut up. Shut I want fair and square. <laughs> this is mine. I don't need your Uh-oh. knowledge, your truth. And then we get a nice little scene where finally Sam gets brought up to sp- brought up to speed on all the nonsense that's going on on Earth. It's yeah. hard to like remember that oh, Krakoa is a new nation and all this other crazy shit's going on when you're dealing with like a lot of this heavy Imperial Guard stuff and Empire uh, Shi'ar Empire stuff. Like a lot of that stuff takes you completely out of that story, and you're like, oh yeah. And they do it in kind of a funny way. They're like, oh, you got your own mutant language, and like, but and Bobby just says, yeah, he 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 did in <laughs> Krakoa. <laughs> It's pretty. It's Crazy. pretty spot on. Yeah, and he's just telling him how like the whole like system on Krakoa works, and how every time a mutant gets uh, joins Krakoa, they get their their mind information gets uploaded into the database of Krakoa or whatever it's called, whatever it's referred to. Krakoa and it's a, what uh, network thing? Lexicon. <laughs> yeah, that thing. They're all lexicon. <laughs> yeah, I'm down with that. <laughs> And then they're kind of like tripping over, or I guess they're kind of like, uh, I guess, uh, highlighting the fact that also there's a secret council and Douglas sits on it vicariously because he can narr- he can essentially translate for Krakoa. Yeah. <laughs> and then Sam digs into them and like, well, they never asked you like to be on the council at all. <laughs> and then Bobby gets his high horse back out and he's like, yeah, he's like, you know, yeah. You know, <laughs> 
maybe they forgot or you know it's it's all right I, it's it could still be it could still happen you know yeah. <laughs> they always have i always gonna have forgiveness in my heart maybe they'll come around to it <laughs> oh geez but uh as it's happening uh we get uh isabel coming back or before that happens um they're talking and what are they laughing about? Oh, they're talking about the fact that he got punched in the face, pretty much. Yeah, they're joking about it because like they, they they wanted to transition back to like from like the awkwardness of like him not being on the council and just like, yeah. like trying to move on, and and he, and he kind of like talk, puts it back on uh, them reuniting, and then he makes the joke about his nose, and they pretty much just lose it over that. It looks like a kind of a creepy laugh, though. Like it looks like something out of like a a, a Batman comic. <laughs> it does. It's weird. Like joke, it's like a weird a moment. Yeah. yeah. But Sam's yeah. baby mom rolls in and is like, "We got work to do. You guys are off the hook." But the bad news is, you're on the hook for some other shit. <laughs> yeah. We got. Uh, you're gonna. You're gonna be put to work, people. You're now recruited. We got a mission, and. What happens? What happens? Sam looks at her and she go. He goes, "You son of a bitch!" <laughs> <I'm in." laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what happens. Exactly. That is exactly how that goes. Uh, I say that for everything now. By the way. Well, that's pretty much the way to do it. Anytime someone asks you, then like that's just the proper way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Acceptance. Oh, uh, fine. Good times. Uh, but we land on uh, we land on this planet, right? Chandala. Do we land on Chandala or do we cut away to Chandala? I thought they land on some other planet and then we cut to Chandala? Or are they both well, at Chandala? I think that's them leaving or arriving at some sort of planet. I think that might be them since it's like swooping inward. Yeah. Because that's what I'm getting with that. That's them arriving on some sort of outpost. Yeah, because she did make that comment about those outposts and all that type of kind of stuff. So that's them arriving. Then we cut to the Shi'ar home, home, the, throne world, throne world, Chandelier. Yeah, Chandelier. And we're met with uh, what's her name, Zandar, right? Zin, Zandara. Oh. Zandara, which is she's, yeah, Zandara, uh, which is Xavier. Xavier's in the child. Child. I didn't even know that. Yeah, apparently that was already canon for like a year or so now, or something like that. Yeah, or, they made that canon. Yeah, that was like a thing. Like they have a kid, and she's like grown up and stuff. Well, I guess she's in her teens, but I didn't know about. It. I was like, "What?" <laughs> that was like kind of a crazy moment there for me, where I'm like, "No shit!" <laughs> right. That really but, caught me by surprise. I was like, "Okay." But we cut to uh, Oracle and uh, or and mentor. mentor and yeah. Oracle. Mentor and Oracle. And she's just like, these are complicated. You don't understand what's going on. And she's just all like, and then um, we find out that uh, war, like, war's kind of like creeping up, more or less. Right? Yeah, they say that the war with the Titans, which I mean, I think they mean like the planet Titan with like where the, like, Thanos comes from. And like, those, yeah. Those people. I think that's what they're Eternals. talking about. They're talking about the Eternals? I believe that's what they. I'm not following a lot of the space like mythos of, of like the current like Marvel stuff outside of the X Men. So maybe they're having like issues with the, the the Eternals because that's what I when they say the Titans, I I, I assume that's what they mean. But maybe there's something else. Like maybe they mean the the Greek Titans. <laughs> Who knows? This is Marvel we're talking about. Yeah, it, it could be. could be. It could be a lot of things. But since they're saying it's an empire, and I know Titan is a, a place in space that is in the Marvel space mythos, that I think that's what they're going at. And they 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 denote that like you know time is no longer the luxury, and that they were trying to groom Zandra for taking the throne later on after Kalark. But apparently, since things are getting hectic and they're on the brink of like civil war in places, they need to consolidate the power of the throne, and that's why she's being brought up to you know up to bat. But she has reserves about it. She's just like, and that's what I was talking about earlier, is like everybody acknowledges 
the 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 Shi'ar Empire is in no better hands than Gladiator. Like he is yeah. the strongest, the most determined, the the most loyal and just paladin of the empire. Because he will he when he led the Shi'ar Imperial Guard, like he did everything for the empire. He only rebelled when things got out of hand and went too far, especially when yeah. Vulcan was the one running the throne and all that nonsense. But when okay. Decane was in, in charge, you know, even if Gladiator didn't like it, he still did what he said until, like, he, he supported the Landra, but once she got on the throne, then it was like, you know, all bets are off, and he's, like, totally like, all right, I'm 100% behind, like, the Empire again. So people respect him, and they acknowledge his history and, like, the way he's displayed his honor and his nobility. So she's just like, what do you want me to do? Like, how am I going to replace you? Even though she is no mega level mutant in her own right. Right. Like I looked into it. She's got, she's got Charles powers, but on a galactic scale, which is what <laughs> like, right. I knew that Charles could tap out through like the ethereal plane and like, um, you know, going in into those kind of ways or not ethereal plane. What is it with the the psychic plane of existence? The astral plane. Astral plane. Thank you. Yeah. I know he could go through that and like talk long distances, but apparently she could just like straight up. She's like. Charles, but with a radius of the universe. <laughs> she yeah. just broadcast to everyone. Yeah. And she's she are in like in the race. Like she's the yeah. Shiar race, like the Avon race. Yeah. yeah, so so they have their natural abilities that come with that too. Like they're stronger straight up in the wiki. It's like they lift like a ton of earth of earth's gravity they can lift. In Earth's gravity, they can lift up to a ton in weight. So that's pretty impressive in itself. But the big thing is, is because of her lineage. And that's really what it comes down to, is it's not anything, I don't think really even like due to the fact that she's part mutant or any of that, which is like an interesting thing to note, because remember in the future in like House of X and Powers of X, the majority of the mutant population is in the Shi'ar Empire. Mm -hmm. And this is like a lot of the preluding of that. Yeah, that's pretty much what that comes down to is like you're not going to get any better of a beginning than right here. Like that birth of the mutant empire is coming with her taking the throne and her stepping in following in the bloodline of her of her mother, which is a royal bloodline. The the Namar is it the Nuramani? Nuramani is like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's the royal that's Landra and and Deathbird and and Decane and all those people. And that's what this is, is this is political this is like a political doctrine in, in truest form. Gladiator's like, I am amazing. I am great. I am like totally like, you know, Red Sun Superman, like when he was born in like the the Russian Empire and he's like, you know, yeah. when Stalin dies, you always better who could do who could run Russia better or the USSR better than me? No one. So I'm gonna run it. But see, that's not Gladiator. He doesn't have that level of arrogance. He knows right. when to step down and like play politics. He could run it, but he wants he wants to avoid civil war, or bloodshed, and fight in fighting. And he's like, you know what? You have the royal bloodline. You have that, you know, ancestry. So I'm gonna put you on the throne because this is what's needed for for the populace and moving forward. Plus, he wants to play more of a strategic hand, being you know leader of the Imperial Guard again. He wants to be that royal advisor from the Imperial Guard. Well, the Nuramani sits on the throne to continue the family bloodline because then it's not contested. It's like you know, just exactly. with uh, just with other history, uh, uh, other historical moments. You look at like bloodlines being fought over, and you know, civil wars being averted because certain people can get behind a, a royal bloodline easier than they can uh, a usurper. Always, that's just always how it's going to be. Even if the usurper's great, it's still you're going to have a lot of that lineage to fight through. Exactly. And this moves that out. It's a, it's a good political maneuver. It shows why you know how well of a leader Gladiator really is. And yeah. it's definitely the oh shit moment of the whole fucking book. I was just like, oh, Charles has a kid. And Charles's kid yeah. is the, the Landra. They have she's the leader of the Imperial or the Shi'ar Empire. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a lot to digest. I'm like, wow, this and is like, yet... way more interesting than any of the other shit. <laughs> And he emphasizes lineage and blood because uh, we're going to see – it's alluding to the fact that it will be contested by these royal bloodlines because we cut back to the new mutants walking into this bunker, I guess, or like weird uh, trailer satellite-like 
it looks like, like, a, like a little satellite outpost, like a little like, yeah. outpost. Very, very low key, almost like a science station. And they're meant to meet a person in here. Yeah, they find out what their secret mission is. They find out what their secret mission is, and we get a a a, a, a dagger, a lance thrown at the new mutants, and we find out it comes from Kalsi Naramani, aka uh, what is Death her name? Deathbird. Deathbird. Yeah. Wow. It is right. Landra's sister. Ex- Yes. Zandra's, Zandra's um, uh, aunt. Aunt. Oh. Auntie, Auntie. Auntie Deathbird. <laughs> uh, Auntie Deathbird. Uh, <laughs> she allied with Modok at one point, didn't she? <laughs> she did, and she also, that, that was the thing, is, is she was a plot device during the rise and fall of the Shi'ar Empire. The, yes. whole, the whole reason Vulcan got the throne is because he married Deathbird, and yes. then due to that, was able to instate himself as the magistrate or magistrix of the uh, the empire because of her lineage. That's how powerful that lineage is. He's a mutant out of nowhere, just coming in like, "Hey, I rule your empire because I, I'm banging Deathbird." Yeah, and they all both they both became prison buddies. That was the funny thing is they got locked up in like the crazy Shiar Galactic prison, and he broke out and found her, and then was like realized who she was, and then they plotted together to like take down Lilandra and take over the empire. And so now they're trying to avoid that, though. They're doing this is deeper into, like you said, he's talking about gladiators talking about the problems with lineage and a lot of the bloodlines. So what he's doing to circumvent that and try to avoid these problems again is he wants to bring her deathbird into the fold and use her to kind of mentor and be a direct advisor to Zandra as a way to try to counteract that infighting. You know, you keep your friends closer it's enemies close, closer yeah. kind of situation and that's a brilliant maneuver like that's that totally makes sense the problem is is i don't know how well deathbird's gonna play along with that Dude, on paper it sounds like play along at all yeah mm-hmm. she's gonna try and usurp like the set she's gonna try and dig her her freaking talons you know pun intended like right into this like she's literally gonna try and take control of it because that's always been her mentality and she was too much like decaying she was too power hungry too uh, her her nobility and her lineage got to her head, so it made her kind of have a megalomaniac god complex, or I guess you could say like an infallible leader complex. So it's she it's is. interesting. It's she, interesting concept, but I I don't think it's gonna play out. No, she even states, "Who else but the most savage, duplicitous, and truly violent person would be best for such a political task?" So that line alone. Shows she she's not gonna be, because she's referring to herself, the ego, maniacalness of it all. Yeah, yeah. This isn't this isn't gonna turn out well. But as she is espousing this kind of pompous, audacious talk, <laughs> we get <laughs> we get and he's just is. like Sam, and he's just like yeah. I think I'm in love. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, it was so fucking perfect. So was like, and that's how you end it. That's how you end new memes. That's like, how you end an issue because that is the end Hickman. of the issue. Man, what a great moment. What a great moment, though. I think I'm in love. God damn, <laughs> God damn it, some spot. Sitting on her fucking her throne, her throne made of stone, sitting there with her hand arched up in the air after she threw her like. Her septum javelin of doom, like it's so. Uh, man, what a what a very metal way to introduce her to fucking Deathbird. I like that. I like the, I like the Deathbirds in this. I like the gladiators in this, and more of the Imperial Guard, and just uh, good times. It was good. It was funny. It had had great moments. Great timing. Great pacing. Yeah, the comedy was all perfect because that's a big key in comedy is timing. That's what they say is like the foundation to a lot exactly. of exactly. Oh, and yeah. the timing and the speed and pacing on this are all on point. Like some of the weird like character developments and like canonical problems are there to kind of cause their issues, but none of that breaks the timing and the and the pacing at all. Yeah, it's great. I enjoyed this, and it's it's like you said, it's just like you hit the ground running and it keeps going, and then, bam, it ends, and you're just like, this is one of them where like even though. We're following these very juvenile kids. I'm like, all right, well, what's going to happen next? Yeah, exactly. Like, their <laughs> their weird displacement in this universe does not 
um, stymie or even roadblock any of the progression of the story. No, like that that greater Shi'ar story and those other little subspots with the Star Jammer and like the King's Egg, all that that stuff is still flowing along. So it's exactly. like we're all still in the same ballpark moving forward, and it's it's great. It's I really love New Mutants. I'm I'm just as excited to read the New Mutants, the next New Mutants, as I am for X Force, and that blows my mind. That is that is kind of crazy. Um, what was your favorite moment in this issue? Um, oh, I I guess I would have to say uh, the most exciting moment would be the reveal of of Zandra and like her place and all that. But I'd have to say like the moment that just gave me the most joy was probably. I have to say the end with 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 Bobby and his his one liner <laughs> like that well that that pretty much was like, <laughs> that left me on such a high note and such a positive note that it really like any any of the lower stuff of the rest of the the issue any of the negatives were immediately just overshadowed eclipsed by that moment like that moment really just came away from it with me and stuck with me heavily. I just love. I I laughed about it. I just kept thinking about it over and over again, and the place and how it fits in the greater in the greater part of the issue, and it just is the perfect bookend. And I I think that was the most brilliant part of the entire of the entire issue is to end it on that note. Yeah. Um. Do you think Chambers just here to make Mondo not or feel as bad because Mondo just seems to be here to be a walking MacGuffin? Yes, and. Yeah, the the chamber's confusing because he almost seems like he's older than everyone, but he's Gen X, so he should be younger. Yeah. So it's I don't I I so I I don't know if it was Savolsky or if Hickman's head of this, and he just, one of the people in charge who was really like an old school fan of like Generation X was like, let's do a Generation X issue, and then people were like ah. And then it started to become like a reality where they're like, yeah, nobody wants a Generation X issue. Like no one gives a shit about that stuff. Like, who cares? And why would we want to bring that back, you know, in, like, modern time? Like, it's 2020, so what are we going to do? So this is, like, the one little nod where they're like, well, let's just bring Chamber, you know. Let's, but see, he's weird because we have Jubilee, and he's from the same, you know, age group and the same di- uh, demographic, you know. She was a Gen Xer, and she seems adult. She seems older than all of these people. Which makes no sense, because yeah. how does Jubilee come across as more mature than the new mutants who are right? who predate her by, like, a decade? <laughs> Insane. I don't get the tone sometimes. Or, I guess, the maturity of these children. Yeah, their, their character, like, weight is loose in, in the universe. Like, it doesn't feel like they're weighed... They hold close to the ground. Like, they're not grounded. Mm-hmm. They're, they're just... Like, at any moment, they could float away because they're so loosely defined, like, their history and who they are. They almost feel like props and less like people. You know what I'm saying with that? Like, the whole concept of how, like, they're just there, like a pallet that just works for the story. They don't really feel like the actual characters themselves that have mm-hmm. aged over the years. Where Scott still has that, even though he feels weird with, like, some of his, like, son-father dynamics that he's playing... That still doesn't make him feel like he's like a kid again or any of that stuff. I don't know. I feel like this is just another one of their attempts to like create a youthful group based off of the older groups. Like what Bendis was doing with the the all new X Men where they were kids again because they're time displaced. Yeah. Like this is them just skipping the time displacement and they're like, just fuck it, we'll write them younger. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, they don't even want to like even bother with like a narrative plot device. They're just like, we're just gonna do it and maybe no one will notice. And they're trying to pull in a lot of new readers to this X-Men arc, so I think that's what they're banking on. It definitely works better than the movies that tried to pull this shit. Yes. <laughs> you get away with that with comics. You can't get away with it an actor that's like 27 and he's supposed to be 50. 50! What do you mean? Casper Van Dien playing Johnny Rico in Starship Troopers? You didn't believe that that man was only 17? Are you telling <laughs> me that, that 36-year-old man didn't look 17? 30, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, uh, Kyle, I don't understand at all. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can deal with NPH. I mean, he was ageless at that time, true. but still, like, there's no way. <laughs> yeah, that just isn't going to work. But, yeah. 
we'll see. I have my worries for the New Mutants movies, just like I have for my New Mutants comic. But luckily, the New Mutants comic is almost a backdrop to all the other like fucking crazy Marvel uh, space stuff. So yeah. I'm fine. Give me more cosmic nonsense and just exactly. have the New Mutants there, then that's fine. I am okay with this for sure. Yeah, uh, Hickman writes cosmic events great. He so. does. Yeah, let him let him do it. And he's sneaking it in, because this isn't even like the main storyline of the X-Men stuff. This isn't at all. This is a tangent. Yet it still kind of harkens back to it and has its own c- contained progression. Yeah. Um, what do you think about Gladiator's decision to ultimately bring back uh, uh, Deathbird? That's going to probably come and bite him in the ass, but he has people like Oracle and Mentor watching his back, and it seems like gladiator though can be fooled or misled in the end he he knows how to make the right decision to fix everything so let's let's see where this goes uh before we can make any real definitive judgments i want to see a few more issues of this playing out before i can just be like yeah gladiator you made a dumb decision you should have you should have been on top of this quicker i mean she's not like magneto where he's clearly reformed or Apocalypse, where you're just like, ah, it seems like he's trying to do the right thing. She's just outright like, ah, I'm Deathbird, I'm going to rule things. <laughs> like, there's no gray area with her right now, so we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, you think her being half-human will have any effect on her reign? I don't think they matter. They're all about, like, uh, if as long as it's, like, the lineage and the, it follows yeah, the rules, yeah, as long we're as good. There's- there's a nod to the lineage, and she is right. Lelandra's proper, like, offspring. Like, there's yes. no... Yeah, and the, their dealings with the mutants have been going on for a while, so that that could have a negative impact in that sense because of, like, going back to the fucking Phoenix, like, wiped out an entire planet in their sector. So, like, what, six million, eight million, like, citizens just dead, wiped out instantly? So there might be that. Like, they might be like, but she's part mutant, and they're kind of have a stigma in their galaxy and what was it vulcan just like you know usurped lelandra before and took over the the entire empire and like forced them into a war they didn't want so there might be that kind of bad blood but i think because lelandra was such a prominent and iconic leader and led mm-hmm. them to a lot of like unifications and like advancements in their society i think that might be her strongest bet and with gladiator giving her the nod i mean people respect him so i think in the political infighting sense, the if they can corral Deathbird, which I don't know how that works, but if they can, this all seems like on paper it'll play out pretty well, and the Shi'ar Empire will be stronger because of it. But since it's like kind of in Deathbird's mo to plot scheme and overthrow, we'll see that if it gets uh, reeled in, or if that just plays out like how we expect it. Like it could be a this could be Hickman kind of setting us up, like giving us a bit of a red herring, like oh man, Deathbird's totally gonna fuck everything up. And then, like, when it comes down to it, she's just like, ah, you know what? I always wanted to be an ant. <laughs> and she just, like, kind of mellows out and, like, does the right yeah. thing. Like, that would be a total shock. So, this is Hickman we're talking about, and he does like yeah. to uh, subvert expectations. He does like to do that. That is for sure. Um, didn't Vulcan and Deathbird have a kid at one point? I don't know about that. I, I don't think that ever happened. I do know they were hooking up and they were like getting down and stuff. Yeah. But I don't think they ever had a kid. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Good issue overall. Again, my biggest complaint is when they take the liberties too far with the art, and you're just all like, "This looks like a kid did this." Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. it's it's funny because it's a contrast. Like you can look at it and say instantly, like, "Wow, this is really good art," and then in, and then in another page, you go, like, "What happened here, though?" Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, my biggest gripe so far, but everything else is a small gripe. Considering the rest of the artwork is a hit, I am not concerned at all. At all. The pacing's good. Um, I dig it. I dig the fast pacing because I just want to see things happen. And I don't want to be caught up in, like, I guess their own insecure. That's one thing I like is we're. They're carefree. They're very carefree. We're not caring about like, well, I wish I didn't 
do this because now I hurt my friends. And now we're talking about how I hurt my friends. They don't, it's not like a CW <laughs> episode and they're hamping up the melodrama for like three, four issues. And then you're just like, someone just punched someone in the face. Yeah. <laughs> this, they're like, all right, here's a couple face punches. <laughs> yeah, there is no nonsense in this pacing. And it is, it is quick, fast and all over the place. Like, I love it. I love the no bounds. I love that just like we're just like bouncing from the star jammers, the Imperial Guard, to now other parts dealing with Deathbird, and then they shoehorn not shoehorn, they slipped in the fucking brood into this. So it's like, oh man, we are we're hitting on all cylinders with like X Men space exploits, you know, sp- X Men space shenanigans. <laughs> it's gonna come to a tipping point. It's gonna come to literally like they're building it seems like they're building towards like a, a kind of Ocean's Eleven style tipping point where everything lines up. Yes. I guarantee you the Star Jammers will be back. Oh, yeah. They realize they, that that thing has been swapped out. And they've been once they figure out the what the egg, the egg is nothing, yeah. They're going back. The egg is a lie. <laughs> it's like the cake. Um. Yeah. Everything's a lie. And it's all the Star Jammers' fault. <laughs> um, any other things you want to mention about this issue? Um, anything that stood out, anything that made you go, wow, look at that. That's a good job. I mean, not, not to, I mean, not to just always wank Hickman, but like I said, we had our, our gripes with like a few things here and there. And then there were some on the art end. There were some on just like the character development end, but those, those are just the small critiques for the sake of critiquing and sure. having like a devil's advocate approach. Overall, I, I'm hundred percent excited to read yes. issue three and and that is that is the big takeaway from this is that i am continuously excited to read more new mutants and that is that is a a shocking fact within itself seeing bobby sam and smasher together is pretty cool um that was cool when they were they were doing stuff in the avengers run too which was hickman's avengers run i believe oh Okay, so this is kind of like a little throwback to his little plot devices that he built off of with the Avengers and the X-Men Fallout from, like, yeah. going even further back. Yeah, it was Avengers, New Aven- or New Avengers, one of those, yeah. but they, they tied together. Yeah, That's so. cool. Um, that was cool, yes, and feel free to, you know, jerk off Hickman anytime. You make that man come when you jerk him off, good sir. <laughs> <laughs> I take him to completion. That's what I do. <laughs> I don't leave him hanging. Yes. You know, he leaves me satisfied, so I try to do the same. Man. Yeah, come on now. You don't want to be like Tom King. You don't want to blue ball him. And oh, go, God, oh, Tom King blue ball. He deserves all the blue balls he could ever get. Uh... Oh, man. That dude's got some premature problems right there. That's, you mm. know what? He, he he blew his load quick, where he's just like, I'm going to start right back. I kill Alfred. <laughs> he's just like, whoa. Whoa, dude. Just pace he got it's a slow burn with that one. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, Tom King got a hot girlfriend, like one that's way above his league, and he's just like, I don't, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> yeah, he he tried to like appreciate her, like not not like overplay his hand, but then you know when things moved on, it's like I'm gonna hand this girl off to the next guy, and he's just like, I'm gonna wreck this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, it just, I'm gonna abuse her. <laughs> it got dark. I was just like, I'm not into this kind of porn. Uh, uh, but that'll do it for this week (laughs) this week on tom king's batman Batman. (laughs) uh that'll do it for podcast of x this week i am Danny. i'm kyle i'm not danny you're danny uh we're on instagram we're on the socials uh send us a message on anchor if you're on anchor um and next week we are Hopping into X Force issue number two. Are you ready for that one? Oh, yes, I am quite excited for that one. That's that one good. is awesome. Yes. Ooh, we got all that build up with that nonsense with Charles getting shot and like them going to try to figure out what's going mm-hmm. on with Domino. And now we get to see the playoff. We can yeah. see Wolverine do what he does best. Like you're going to get iconic, like yeah, Dark are. Phoenix saga, like Wolverine picking himself up, ready to fuck up the Hellfire Club kind of Wolverine. So get ready for that. Get ready for that, folks. But that will do it for us this week. Catch you later. Remember, the robots are going to murder you. They might even probe you. I don't know. But probably murder you. Regardless, it ends in death. 
robots or not. So look forward to that, folks. And we'll see you next week.